Hello everybody and welcome to my 28th XL 2013 tutorial um, and the main trick of this one is that we've actually switched to 2016 now um, but in terms of what we're going to be going through it's virtually the same they haven't changed any of the basics or, or the overall lookout of 2013 they've just added in some new features uh, which if you do want to know a bit more about then you can watch my first impressions video um, I'll put a, a, a link down in the comments below. Um, but for now, we're going to keep on just going through these tutorials uh, and everything's still the same. It'll work in 2013 or 2016. Um, if you have a copy of 2013 under the subscription of 365, you get the free upgrade anyway. So um, most of you will be on this this one anyway. Uh, but this episode's going to be on scatter graphs. Uh, and the first thing you need for a scatter graph is information set out in the following criteria like this. Um, so you need two sets of data, one which, which is going to represent your x axis and one which is going to represent your y axis. Um, and you want to think of it as your x axis is going to be the things that you want to go along the bottom of your graph and your y axis is going to be the things that going uh, along the side or up the top um, of your graph and then you're just going to highlight all your data uh, you're going to go to insert uh, and then you're going to select the scatter graph here option um, and you're going to click on that and then you've got a few choices of different graphs that you can use uh, you can have ones that have lines connecting them you can have them with just things like this uh, you can have bubbles uh, if you really, if you're into that kind of thing, um, I'm just going to go for the normal scatter graph. Uh, and uh, at the moment, I've just got a random number generator in here that's generating me a, a negative correlation. Um, a negative correlation being one that's going down like this. Uh, and the correlations are generally what you're looking for when you're working with scatter graphs. So here you can see as x gets larger, y start going down. Um, if I change this so that it represents a negative correlation instead, um, just a positive correlation instead just by dropping all these down, then you'll see it goes upwards instead. And um, generally, you're going to either see one going up, down, across, through the middle, or just all over the place. And that's generally what you're looking for with, with a scatter graph, is, is what the correlation is. Now, what becomes in very handy and something that I'm going to go on in a lot more detail in the next tutorial uh, is uh, forecasting uh, certain lines with this data. Uh, so if I right click on here and click add trend line, uh, you'll notice that it's going to let me add in a trend line here that lets me view the, the general um, trend or the correlation of the data. So you can see this one has a gradient that's positive, so it's going up. Um, and if I switch it back to the negative, uh, and then you'll see that it's now got the the trend line going down. So it works out what the, the trend line is. Um, if you're doing this for some kind of mathematical thing, um, or if you're doing it for forecasting like I use, it's sometimes good to add the um, equation onto the chart. So if you select your trend line and you come down to here and you put display equation on chart, then you'll see that you get the formula for your uh, line or your your trend line in here. Um, so in this case, it's a negative one. So you can see that our gradient of the line is minus 2.1349. Um, and then our intercept of the y-axis is plus 0.466. Um, so you can take that, you can copy that out, you can put it somewhere else, um, you can use it in your formulas, um, and it's just recalculated it again and changed it because I've changed something in the worksheet and these are all random ones and every time I change something in the worksheet it's going to change. Um, but yeah, that's your scatter drug graph. Uh, and also a brief glimpse of using the trend line facility because normally when you use a scatter graph you want to be adding a trend line onto it. They just kind of coincide with each other. Um, and that's going to be it for this tutorial, that's scatter graphs. Uh, in the next tutorial, I'm going to go a little bit in, in more into using the trend lines. Uh, so thanks for listening, and I hope to catch you soon.